Paul Akali here from Advanced Test Equipment Corporation. And I'm Jeff Whaler from Stepper Communication Systems. And this is the Stepper SY3 EMC antenna system. And today we're going to do a how-to video on this antenna system which is optimized for 30 megahertz to 200 megahertz, 200 volt per meter radiated immunity testing. This is the Optimizer EMC analytics tower. On the front here you have your main display which will display the UI. This is the keyboard and mouse which can open up and access to control the unit. This is the control port which will connect directly to the SY3 EMC antenna to control the antenna's movements. This remote port here is used for interfacing with third party software. The receive port here connects to your receive antenna to measure the signal during the tuning process. This output port here connects directly to the SY3 EMC antenna to output your signal during the tuning process. The top uh, spectrum analyzer here is used to measure VSWR in the system while tuning. And the bottom spectrum analyzer here is used to measure the signal received. On the bottom here we have a power supply unit. There is a output here if you need to connect something to it, as well as your power switch over here. This is the SY3 EMC antenna itself. Behind that you have four fiberglass looped elements, as well as two straight fiberglass elements. Over here we have the control cable for the antenna itself. This is the non-metallic stand for the antenna. You have your vertical portion of the stand as well as four feet and uh, a Allen key to secure the feet. Back here we have the mini biconical receive antenna as well as the mini biconical receive antenna stand. I'm going to be putting together the SY3 EMC antenna stand. So first we'll grab the vertical portion, the Allen key, as well as one of the feet. At the base here, there are four holes, one for each feet, as well as four Allen keys that secure the feet. So we will insert the feet into the stand. Make sure to get the leveling feet uh, on the same plane as the base and we will just tighten these Allen keys. There are four leveling feet on each uh, leg, which can adjust the stand once you've uh, put it on the ground. So we'll go ahead and place this here, and we can adjust each foot according to the floor. On the bottom of the antenna here, there are four Phillips head screws that will mount to the stand. We'll go ahead and remove those screws before mounting. And when mounting the antenna, there is a knob here on the stand. This tilts sideways so that you can do vertical polarization. So you need to make sure that this knob is either towards the rear of the antenna or towards the front of the antenna, not on the sides. Go ahead and place all four screws back in here. Each element contains two set screws that will hold in the fiberglass elements as well as the return uh, bracket here that has two set screws. So first thing you want to do is unscrew these set screws as much as possible. We'll grab a looped fiberglass element here. So there are a, sh a long side and a short side. The long side always goes into the return bracket. So we'll insert the long side in and the short side and you just work your way in until they bottom out. Once they've bottomed out, make sure that the element is level and then you can tighten your set screw. Do not over tighten these set screws or you will crack the fiberglass. So, we just need a little bit of tension there. So the front and rear element 
take these looped fiberglass tubes, whereas the center element takes the straight tube. So we'll go ahead and install this. We are now going to set up the mini biconical receive antenna. So we here have a 30 through 1 gigahertz tech box mini biconical antenna. And the stand here is a non-conductive stand that is comprised of ABS and fiberglass. We'll first take the base that has three sections, looks like a little tripod, and we'll take each leg and put it into the bottom of the base. Make sure to unscrew the set screws first, and then you can tighten them up. Once you have the base created, we can go ahead and put in the vertical portion. There are a few set screws here at the bottom, so go ahead and loosen those up, and then you can re-tighten them afterwards. On the back of the mini biconical antenna, there is a single set screw. Go ahead and unscrew that, and we will take the horizontal piece now, which has a uh, a little nub here, a little screw that's sticking out. That screw is meant to line up with this indent. So go ahead and install that. Take your set screw and tighten things back up. Now once you have this, you can put it through the opening here. And you'll put the counterweight on the back side and that's to prevent the stand from falling over. And we have now set up the receive antenna in horizontal polarization. So for demonstration purposes, uh, we are not in an anechoic chamber, but normally your uh, antenna analytics or tower will be outside of your room, whereas the antenna system and the mini biconical antenna will be inside of the anechoic chamber. So we'll first go ahead and take our control cable. Uh, this is a 25 pin D sub connector. We'll connect it to our control port here. Make sure that anytime you're connecting or disconnecting cables that uh, the system is disconnected from power. And you would normally feed this cable through your bulkhead, uh, whether it's through an opening or you can also purchase an optional bulkhead fitting. And if you come to the back over here, you'll see our connection panel on the back of the antenna. There is your control cable and then your coax connection. So we'll go ahead and connect our control cable. Make sure to tighten down these thumb screws. Once you have that connected, we will next connect our coax. Coax is not included in the system, as most labs have their own high power coax. You will need, uh, for tuning purposes, you don't need anything that's high power, but for uh, testing purposes, for mill standard 461G, you will need coax that's rated to 2500 watts at 200 megahertz. So we're gonna first connect to the antenna. So our output port here, that will then connect directly to our antenna system. The next piece of coax that needs to be connected is the receive antenna. So we'll go ahead and connect to the receive port first. and there's an N-type connector on the bottom here. Uh, all, all connections are N-type, so make sure you are getting coax it has N-type connectors. After making all your connections, make sure to tighten them. Okay, so all of our connections have been tightened, thumb screws have been tightened, we are now ready to set up for our horizontal tune. Once you have plugged in the power cord that's on the back of the unit into a power source, uh, it can be plugged into any 110 volt uh, AC power source. 
There is a button on the bottom here to turn on the tower. So we will go ahead and switch it on. You'll need to wait for the system to boot up, but you'll see both of these uh, Regal Spectrum Analyzers start up, and then the screen here on the top will then start up with uh, the Stepper Communication Systems logo and loading screen. We'll wait for that to load and open up the UI. Once the UI has loaded, you'll see on the top here uh, several different green check marks. You want to make sure that all five of those have a green check mark and not a red X. If you have a red X, it means that the system is either not communicating to the spectrum analyzers or not communicating to the driver board, which controls the antenna. Pull out the keyboard here so we can actually utilize the UI. And the first thing to do is to verify the status of the system. You can see that currently the status is idle and the antenna is retracted. On the UI, you can see that we have the tuning configuration on the left as well as antenna controls on the right. To start a new tune, we'll go to the tuning configuration and we will scroll over to create new configuration. Once that has been selected, it will pull up the screen and you can name your configuration as well as select your polarization, either horizontal or vertical. The tuning configuration name should uh, represent you know, what polarization you're doing as well as the room. So for example, we will call this ATEC RF Lab Horizontal. Once you have named and selected your polarization, all you do is click Start uh, Tune or Tune New. Once you click Tune New, the system will calibrate itself and you will hear the noise of the stepper motor trying to retract the antenna. Once the calibration process has started, the fan will kick on, which represents the triggers on the Regals have started. And now, the system will start tuning itself. You can hear the elements extend, and this will take about two hours, two hours and 15 minutes to do a complete tune. Uh, make sure that you're not standing near the antenna during the tuning process as uh, your body can affect the signal output of the antenna. So you'll hear the motors go and uh, now it started its tuning process. You can leave, go to lunch, leave it tuned overnight and come back and uh, then start your 200 volt per meter testing. So this, once you've started your tune, uh, you can see the time remaining on the tune as well as the tuning progress. If you do want to cancel the tune, there is a cancel tune button. So we'll go ahead and click cancel tune. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to cancel the tune? There's a tune in progress. Once you click cancel tune, it will uh, exit the screen and then the antenna will retract back to the retracted position. Once your tune has completed, you can now go into the configuration tab here and select your configuration. We'll go ahead and select our testing configuration, which comes default with all of our antennas. Once you've done that, a couple of options have appeared. You can either retune the existing configuration or delete the existing configuration. And on the right side, you can now control the antenna. So we have uh, a drop-down list for frequencies uh, from 30 to 200 megahertz. There's also the uh, up or down tab, so you can scroll by next segment. Right below that, you can send that frequency or those links to the antenna. So we'll go ahead and extend the antenna out and it will say elements are moving, do not apply power. We don't ever want to apply power to the system while the elements are moving. Uh, there is a, a case where you can apply low power to the system, which we'll uh, look at when we uh, do manual adjust. You can also retract the antenna. 
So if you click that, all the elements will retract back to the home position. There's also a recalibrate function, and this is used if uh, power gets disconnected to the system while the elements are extended. The stepper motors will lose their holding torque, and uh, you'll need to recalibrate. When you recalibrate, the antenna retracts the elements and then continues to retract them and over retracts. So you'll hear a very loud kind of grinding noise, uh, but that's to be expected. So I'll go ahead and click recalibrate. You can hear the antenna calibrating. Makes uh, quite, quite the noise, but don't worry, nothing to worry about. And the last feature here is the manual adjust button. And so this is used for uh, any frequencies that you might not hit the 200 volt per meter field that you're looking for. You can click manual adjust and it will actually pull up uh, the element lengths for each element uh, as well as the frequency. So we can actually change these values, increase the element length or shorten it uh, to create a better E-field. You can then send those values by using send to antenna, or you can also save those new values to your configuration. So we'll just show, we'll change the element length a little bit, we'll save it to configuration, and once you've clicked that button, it's now overwritten, and you can exit this menu. Once you've completed your testing, uh, the elements inside of the antenna will be extended and you will need to make sure to attract the elements before dismantling the antenna. Make sure to go to this retract button here and we'll click that and uh, you can now hear the elements are going back to their home position and this is very important to do before dismantling the antenna otherwise you could damage the copper that's inside of it. Once you have tuned the antenna system uh, for your horizontal and vertical polarization and it's time to do the test, the MIL standard 461G test, uh, we will need to disconnect our receive antenna and uh, connect our transmit antenna to your power source. So we'll go ahead and first remove the receive antenna uh, coax. Uh, nothing should be connected to the tower here except for our control cable. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the receive antenna. We'll go ahead and disconnect our transmit antenna and we'll connect this to our amplifier in just a moment. Be sure to pull your receive antenna from out of the room. We do not want this in the room while we are creating that 200 volt per meter E field. So we'll go ahead and take this out of the room and the next step would be to set up your field probe. So we'll go ahead and set up our field probe here. So normally when you're in a room, you'll uh, set up your E-field probe uh, 30 centimeters above the bench. Now for our antenna system, for the lower frequencies, we like to offset the probe uh, as the E-field uh, is in two lobes. Um, and there's a small knoll in the center. As you go higher in frequency, uh, those lobes will start to mesh together and create one large field. Uh, and so you can start moving the probe inwards towards the center. Um, but for now, we're starting at the low end at 30 megahertz, so we've offset the probe uh, to the right of center. Once the antenna is uh, sent to the frequency, uh, we can then start applying power. Uh, you can see that the status is idle and we are at 30.15 megahertz. Here we have our signal generator as well as our amplifier. Uh, this is a 100 watt amplifier. Normally you would need something uh, upwards of 2500 watts to be able to hit that 200 volt per meter across the whole frequency range. Uh, we're going to just do a little demo uh, with low power uh, to show the R system is hitting the uh, E field at the fundamental frequency and not at a harmonic. So we have the antenna set up currently uh, and putting 10 watts in uh, input power 
we're hovering right around two to one VSWR. Uh, now, note, we're not doing this in an anechoic chamber, so the results in the chamber are gonna be a, a lot different. Uh, but with the input power of 10 watts, uh, if you walk over to the E-field, as you can see here at 32.4 megahertz, so at the fundamental frequency, we have 14.8 volts per meter. Now this isn't above, this isn't actually at 30 centimeters, so if we raise it to about 30 centimeters, you can see we're creating about 18 volts per meter at the fundamental frequency. Now if you go to the next peak, you can see that it is at around 475 millivolts per meter, and that's at 97 megahertz. So the second harmonic is completely uh, reduced. I mean, we, we probably have about 40 dB of attenuation on the second harmonic. And on the third harmonic, you can see being at 500 millivolts per meter, um, it's greatly attenuated uh, in comparison to the fundamental frequency.